Hey, this is Steve Bloom, and you are listening to the GeekCast Radio Network. Fifty years ago, a little old man brought his little blue box to a junkyard. And now, Doctor Who is a cultural phenomenon worldwide. Join the GeekCast Radio Network and Mark Who 42's Hooniverse as we review Doctor Who episodes past and present, discuss the Doctor's friends and enemies, see where the Doctor's been, where he is, and where he's going. Sit back and grab a jelly baby and join Mark Who 42's Hooniverse. It's the ride of this and every other lifetime. Fantastic. Allons-y. You are now on the inside of what I like to call the circle of trust. We are all connected in the great circle of life. You know something, Bert? I think you and I are going in circles. It feels like we're going in circles. The circle is now complete. When I left you, I was but the learner. Now I am the master. Because it's a circle. Yeah, we heard about the circle. Yes, we're yeah. familiar with shapes. Hi, this is Greg. This is Chuck. And this is Dan. And we are Talking in Circles, brought to you by the Ecast Radio Network, a podcast that may be recording on Friday the 13th, but we are not superstitious. Maybe a little stitches. <laughs> Thank you, Michael Scott. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> this week we will be doing some homework. Yes, school may be ending for a lot of you. But for us, if you listened to us last week, we all have special assignments that we'll be going over. Well, fun assignments. But before we get to all that, how's the week been going for you guys? Well, the week's been pretty good. It's kind of funny. Today they changed all the light bulbs in our office. I was doing that today at work. It is like super freaking bright in there. (laughs) I'm like... and, And everybody was complaining about it too. And my eyes were actually hurting me and stuff, but... I was like, is this for real right now? I'm like, <laughs> I mean, it isn't this bright when I go outside and stare <laughs> into the sun. Planes start like crashing in. It's like, <laughs> they yeah. think it's a signal. I thought one yeah. was trying to land before, but I did, uh, I was able to actually start to see sound waves. So that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then also I, I noticed that I have a compound fracture in my left arm, so. That was, <laughs> you could well, you see my bones, you know. So, but yeah, that was kind of obnoxious. But yeah, other than that, kind of a boring week. <laughs> that reminds me of I used to work at Macy's, and I changed lights a lot, and I almost burned down Macy's. Nice <laughs> doing that one time. Um, I was putting in like the there are the fiber lights and the ones that are a little bit longer, and it was in a like under like a, a fixture, so it was like I had to get. On top of the ladder, get underneath it. It was like really hard to get to, and they're hard to put in because they're like you have to like finagle them right. Yeah, and correctly. you really got to just jam it in there, Dan. You do, That's you do. You got to, you know, you got you got to come in at the right direction because if you come in the wrong direction, it's it's not going to accept it. No. It's just gonna it's gonna deny it. Yeah, it's but, gonna go. I have a headache. Uh, I just want to go back to sleep. We're still you talking know, the, about the, lights the wires, here. <laughs> <laughs> the wires get crossed, and it's it's a it's a huge mess. It's you know, yeah. And God forbid you put it in the wrong hole, <laughs> and then it's just a gigantic yep. problem. You have to change them at the right time of the month too. Uh, yeah, that's very true. <laughs> but what I ended up doing, I was it was not like going in, but it was getting powered, and because the the one side was it was like lighting up, but the other side. What had nothing to connect to, so it was like hitting the plastic, and it started to f- like flame and smoke a little bit. <laughs> you like, should go. You should see and, a doctor with that, Dan. <laughs> um, luckily, good. I had gloves on, and it was like I'm like crap, crap. It was just like it. Luckily, got it to stop, but I was freaking out for a while because the entire thing was like plastic, and then had those like uh, fake plants, you know, that are just like ready to catch on fire at a moment's notice. Because <laughs> Let's put those next to hot lights because that won't ever lead to a problem. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> just remind me of that. Yeah, but. funny stuff. But besides that, Greg, how's your week been going? Uh, it's all right. I did change light bulbs. Don't have any fun light bulb stories except my I, I accidentally broke one, and then my boss was or my boss's father was there. Like I don't know why we needed two people 
to change light bulbs. Apparently he wanted it to turn into some kind of joke. <laughs> but I was like trying to unscrew one of them and I accidentally broke it. And so the, it was like, uh, half of it was still suck, stuck in the, the socket. That's what she said. And, hey, um, I'm like to, to my boss father, I was like, you got a potato? Cause that's like the home remedy fix for it and everything. <laughs> so now I'll take care of it. He goes over and he grabs scissors to try and get it out. <laughs> oh, God. Like, How you say potato, you? I say scissors. Scissors, yes. <laughs> Eventually, I just ended up, like, he's like, ah, this, is, this isn't working. I had to go get him some uh, needle nose pliers, which it took him a while to, to get the light bulb out. He had to get him something more that's more... Uh... Conductive electricity. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it was unplugged and away from the socket and everything, so there there was no chance of uh, him getting lit up or anything. So, except when you decided to play a joke and plug it back in, <laughs> just to see. Like, let's see what happens. It, it was impossible to plug back in. Just let me say that. <laughs> Wow, a lot of light bulb stories. I did not expect that to happen today. <laughs> it's because we got so many good ideas. <laughs> I was going for that, and I appreciate someone picking that up. So. <laughs> but yeah, my week's been kind of, you know, it's similar to you guys. I'm gearing up for our busy season at work. So at the peak of my busy season, I'll have like 90 people that I'm going to be in charge of, which is kind of crazy. Luckily, I have like people that are there to help, obviously. But we have been doing these like... uh a group interview things. It was just kind of crazy because there was a moment in time where like I became the person that was interviewing and that like this one lady was not having it with one of these uh, things we were doing, uh, an assignment. And she kind of started attacking me um, <laughs> because she didn't like it. She's like, I don't understand why we're doing this project. It's just, it's this thing we're doing. It doesn't really relate to exactly what we do. And I'm like, I'm like I'm trying to explain it and explain why, but I'm like, wait, no, this is not what's supposed to happen here. It's supposed to be the other way around. I'm like, all right. It was just it was just kind of awkward. I'm like, I, I always thought that was kind of funny. But besides all that, my week's actually been watching a lot of television because we, we've we been given each assignment. Uh, basically, I, Greg, and Chuck have all have a special thing we have to do. We each, each assigned each other a different task uh, to read, watch. Or listen to something. Or put lotion um, on something. <laughs> Not that kind of task, Greg. We told you no. How many times do we have to tell you no? <laughs> it puts the lotion on its skin or like it gets those again. Yes, it does. We've <laughs> You did that really well, Greg. <laughs> Thanks. I wasn't even trying to do it really well. I haven't seen that movie in forever, so. But uh, basically, I was given the movie, uh, the TV shows from Greg, Doctor Who. And from Chuck, Jericho. And uh, Chuck, what were you given to do? (laughs) I was given by you a TV show called Human Target and a graphic novel um, by Greg called uh, Wolverine Old Man Logan. All right. And Greg, what were your assignments? My assignment was to put the lotion in the basket. It's My... getting better in the worst way possible. <laughs> um, fail, you I, fail. <laughs> I, I was given Super by Mr. Daniel, and I was given Superman Red Sun by Mr. Chuck. Chuck and I are trying to convert Greg into a Superman fan. Those, the movie Super has nothing to do with Superman, but you know, maybe trick him into thinking it does. Uh, you didn't hear that, Greg. <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on? Well, it's saying on? that as if I know you're going to like it. But so what we're going to do is we're kind of going to go into our assignments, what we thought of, you know, what we were given. At the end, since it is homework, give it a grade, you know, from A plus to F, <laughs> which could be some interesting conversation if we hated each other's assignments, which is a possibility. You never know. So this might be the last episode of Talking in Circles. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start with me and my assignment. And like I mentioned, I was given two TV shows. And I'll be honest, I obviously didn't get to finish both of the television shows. It's a little bit more difficult there. I did watch about 12 episodes of Jericho. And I honestly just finished about 
episode number seven or eight of the first season of Doctor Who. And Greg, I know you said it was probably a good idea to kind of go to different doctors, but my brain just doesn't work that way. So I had to watch them in order, but I'll keep that in mind when I, when I come to my final grade. So, but I'll, I'll start with Jericho and I I did watch a lot, a lot of this series a little bit more than Doctor Who because I can get my wife to watch it and I, couldn't get her to watch Doctor Who no matter how hard I tried. <laughs> but the ladies always love Doctor Who. I know. She just wasn't. I think it was just the production value. I think it was a little too much for her. I think she could eventually get into it. She loves Buffy. She loves some of that stuff. So I don't know. I think I don't know. She hates British people. Maybe that's it. I don't know. I hate <laughs> British people. <laughs> I'm just joking. She really does not hate British they people. They are adorable. I do, though. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> um, but... Uh, we did watch uh, Jericho, and like I said, she watched it previously. And and Chuck, I, I remember actually when this show was out, talking to you about it. So for those who don't know, the TV show Jericho, I think it was it NBC or CBS. I don't remember what network. I'm uh, pretty sure CBS. CBS. The basic idea behind it is it's a small town in Jericho in in, in Kansas, and there's like a, a little bit of a political turmoil going on. And in the first episode, you see an atomic bomb go off in the in way down in the background, they believe it in Denver. And you kind of don't know why. And like it starts leading to more and more issues. And like slowly and surely this mystery is kind of revealed of what happened. Or at this point in the episode about eleven or twelve, still you still have a great deal of mystery going on. We it don't know exactly what happened, why it happened. You know that multiple nuclear weapons went off. It was some sort of attack. You don't know who attacked us what have you. And one thing I'll say is with with Jericho, I think that's the obviously the best thing about it is that mystery. I do think I can't remember, but I feel like I was told what the mystery was. As I'm watching it, I'm trying to see if that was right. So I'm hoping that's not going to hurt my overall opin- opinions of it. It hasn't so far because that's been my favorite part about the show. Um, the show has a ton of different characters. There are all these like it's an entire town and I didn't really know going in like what it was like thinking of of a show that's kind of almost in like a post apocalyptic world. It's it's not what I at first expected. The town's a little bit more in shape. It's a little bit more. It's not like destroyed per se, but you kind of get there eventually. It comes slowly. Gets kind of a little bit more dangerous as supplies run low. As you know, the outsiders start coming in, you realize that people around that neighborhood are dangerous and you have a lot of people in conflict within the town. Like I said, my favorite part was the mystery. The least favorite part, and I don't say this is least favorite, but I think what this show would have greatly benefited from would be like a 12 episode season. Uh, I know this was out in a time when networks weren't really doing that. And the reason I say that is because I think there are some like subplots, some relationship issues that. I think aren't as strong as the main conflict. I'm thinking per se, there's a, a relationship between one of the main characters, like cheats on his wife. And there's like a, like a love triangle type of story that goes on. And not that it's horrible. It just, it, I was more interested in other things that were going on. And you have a little bit of occasions of that. It does date itself a little bit. Some of them <laughs> mostly with the musical choices, but I, it is on Netflix though. And I know Netflix sometimes inserts songs that weren't originally there. Because they can't get the original because of licensing. But it, it wasn't anything bad per se. Just some pop songs. And I'm like, wow, I've not heard this song in a while. But it, it brings you back. But um, I thought it was a great deal of fun. I love just the idea of it. Uh, I thought the characters were really strong. Uh, a variety of them. You have like your bad boy. You have like the conflict in, of leadership. The the main actor, I, mean, I guess you would say he's the main character. Uh, Skeet Ehrlich, Erl- who plays Jake Green. He's like the bad boy. He was out of town. He came in right before the bond went went off. He, you know, he's interesting because you kind of learn more about him as the as the series goes on. He has a little bit of a mysterious past, um, and I, I do like when you get some of the backstory. Also, uh, by far my favorite character is Robert uh, Hawkins, who is played by Lenny James. Who people who have watched uh, Walking Dead, you'll probably recognize him. He was in yes. a few episodes of Walking Dead, most notably the pilot, and then. He was in an, another episode in season three, I believe. But I think my uh, another favorite character of mine was Jonathan Green, played by uh, Gerald McRaney, who is like he plays a soldier in everything he ever does. I think because he w- was a soldier, he was in um, Major Dad. 
He's a uh, he's great. I think he has he's a great presence, and there's a great conflict with him as the mayor and another guy who wants to th- th- take his his spot. I uh, like that guy as an actor a lot. He's pretty cool. I do, yeah, I do, I do like him. He's actually really good in a House of Cards too, and he plays a pretty big role in a few episodes of West Wing. But there's a big reason why I watched 11 episodes of it. Like I said, there's there's certain issues I had, um, nothing g- gigantically big. And like I said, I just felt it was more of a product of the framework of having it 20 episodes. I don't get why this was not a bigger hit. Like that, I don't understand. Cause yeah, th- I know. There's so much worse television out there that's so much bigger of a hit. And you think of today, I, I, I was actually having this conversation with my wife when we were watching it, like thinking of what this would be like if it came out today. When you think you have like shows that have a bigger production value, um, not that the production value is low, but it's not what it was can be now. Um, I mean, there's a show called Revolution, which I feel tried to do similar idea of what this did, but was not nearly as successful. Um, I don't think it was just as good as building its mystery or its mystery wasn't as in- interesting. I'm very curious to see how it ends. Uh, I'll surely be finishing it, but uh, I would give it a very, very strong B plus, And I could see that going up once I finish, finish the series. So, yeah. And I, I often wondered that too, why it didn't do better. And I, I think like today that post-apocalyptic theme is a lot more popular. And I think the show would benefit from, like if it was on today, as opposed to back then, and I don't know if it was just in a bad time slot or if it was up against some other major shows, maybe at the time that could have been it something, but yeah, it's it's really a shame that it didn't go past, I guess you'd call it one and a half seasons, because they kind of came back and made like eight more episodes after the first season, but... And- and that was when like they had that huge uproar, right? Where it was actually canceled for a little bit and came back. Yeah, so there, there was like a there was a petition online and all this stuff. They were like sending in peanuts or something. I forget exactly what it was. It's been a while since I watched. The yeah, show. something like that. But um, I I do I agree with you, Dan, with some of the side plots like that love triangle thing. That's kind of like it seems just thrown in there just to be thrown in, and it's like you know I want to get back to the other stuff, like the cool stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, and there's also like uh, a love story with like a one of the, f- the guy who's on the farm and like an IRS agent who tried to close his yeah. farms in the first episode. And I feel that's probably one of the weaker storylines, and it kind of goes in some obvious places. I preferred like twelve issue, uh, twelve episode series seasons. I it's very difficult for a show, I think, to go beyond that, um, especially when you have such a high concept like this. I was gonna say I like. Uh... You know, like what you said about the the Robert Hawkins character, and um, I think he's probably one of, if not the most interesting character on there, just because there's so much mystery surrounding him and everything. And I guess maybe he likes to do those types of shows since he kind of accepted the Walking Dead role, but this this show reminds me of a Walking Dead without the zombies, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, it's a lot of the same feel, like it really is. And I, I wonder, too, if it just, like, Maybe the world wasn't ready for a show like this because it's 2006, which is only five years or so after t- September 11th. So maybe it was too real at the time. I mean, The Rock didn't. Uh, War was only a three years old at that point. And so I don't know if that played into it, but I don't know. I, I-, I think I'm glad it got at least that extra eight episodes. So I'm hoping that, you know, it, it-, it solves its mystery because nothing's worse than when something la- uh, ends at a cliffhanger and you're just left wanting more and you just end up never getting it. So. Thank you for that assignment, Chuck. I would definitely give it a passing grade. So, very nice, Mister Clark. You you have passed your assignment in this portion. I I, I appreciate that, <laughs> Greg. <laughs> uh, Greg, have you have you seen Jericho? I I have. I really enjoyed it. Uh, it. It's been a while since I've seen it, though. Yeah, yeah. I would recommend that to, to listeners out there, though. I feel like I'm one of the few people that haven't seen it yet. So I don't know. I love the little theme song at the beginning. The little. It's not even a song, but it's like the Morse code thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just so freaking cool. Yeah, I and I, I love there were a little bit of twists and turns where, I, I, like, there was a military aspect. And you're like, oh okay, where's this gonna go? And it kind of switched that. And I just I love the idea of like the the world kind of having to redevelop itself. You think of that movie Red Dawn, and this is not nearly just like that, but just the idea of like it people stuck in America up behind enemy lines and what that looks like. It, it's, it's just an interesting yeah. concept per se. So 
Now, my next assignment, and this one I'm, I'm worried about going into, not because I didn't like it or liked it or what have you, but I just know the fandom for Doctor Who is so gigantic. I don't, I don't want to, you know, mess with the Whovians. I know they, they, <laughs> they, ha- they are powerful people. But, but the good thing though, Dan, is the Doctor doesn't like guns, so at least we're not carrying guns around. So that's yeah, that's very true. He just has his sonic sc- screwdriver, which I'm still not sure what that does yet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and his TARDIS. But yeah, I've been wanting to watch Doctor Who forever. Like I honestly, my first introduction to Doctor Who was listening to the Nerdist podcast. And now that I've, I've seen like eight episodes, I get so many jokes that I did not get before. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that makes sense. And even in our podcast, Greg, two episodes ago was like the Daleks episode. And when it's like, exterminate, exterminate. When you did that, I had no idea what that was. But now I understand. It was a reference <laughs> to Doctor Who. I just thought you were going crazy for a moment. So Nope. The series as a whole, like I mentioned, I... I didn't go around. I know people have their different favorite doctors and like you could each doctor is a little bit different. I have to watch something in order just because I'm afraid of missing something. And I, I did have a kind of a question for you, Greg. Sure. Where, when did you start watching Doctor Who? Well, who was the first doctor that kind of brought you into Doctor into the whole oh, religion was, they call Doctor Who? I think it was in college, like early in college. And I was either homesick or I didn't like I only had classes in the morning or something and I was home for lunch but I was watching tv and I was flicking around and I just it just happened to be on I've I've heard of it before and I I knew it was uh science fiction-y type stuff and I'm always into science fiction and so it was like part way through an episode and it was a, a David Tennant episode it's the one where they're on this like um train um going to a, a location and um this uh voice kind of takes over uh this lady's body and everything so i came into that part way through and at first it seemed kind of just weird to me and then later on i asked a friend about doctor who and they kind of were like really um excited that i started watching it and told me that i should uh I should watch some more because I wasn't about to really give it a chance, but they they told me to give it a, uh, another try. So I watched a couple more episodes, and and I was kind of hooked hooked onto it pretty bad after that. <laughs> you couldn't get off of it. That's right. <laughs> what what I realized because I I started from episode one, and what I realized when I was watching episode two was well, I've actually seen this episode before, and I think I caught it like similar to you a late night on like maybe Sci Fi Channel. I don't even remember. And I, didn't, I had no idea what Doctor Who was at all. I, I think it was just like, I was just fascinated by just what I was seeing. So, because I was watching the second episode, I'm like, wow, I've seen this before. So, going to the, kind of going to the first episode, I, I would say that the first episode of Doctor Who is not all that great. But I've heard pretty much everyone that I've talked to about Doctor Who says, the, the pilot's not good. <laughs> give it some time and then you get kind of into it and like you mentioned greg you got I, I do think it does take it is an acquired taste yeah because it it, it kind of leans a little bit to bad science fiction with some of the the props and costumes and weirdness going on but like the stories that go along with it are just so smart yeah. That it really makes up for that. Yeah, because the second episode was, I, I I loved it. Like, I, I, it was probably, it might even be my favorite episode so far, that or the Daleks episode. And like you said, it is, it's more about the concept, it's more about the execution than the actual production of it. And yeah, some of the special effects are, I mean, especially dated now, but you, you kind of accept that. I mean, it's a BBC TV show, so you, it's not going to be like, you know, Avengers level effects. I know you said Christopher Eccleston's probably not one of your favorite doctors. Is that right? Yeah, he he plays it a little bit more uh, meaner than the the other doctors. The other doctors play it a little bit more fun. Um, I haven't seen the the latest doctor that's out, but uh, so far he's Eccleston only had one season to go through the role, so I, I don't think he. And he was he was the 
the first one to come on after that long break from the eighties from Doctor Who. So it was, it was kind of, um, it was probably a, a tough thing for him to, uh, come up with that and figure out how to play it and everything. And I, I don't think he really had long enough with the role too. So there's, there was a couple of things going against him. Yeah. And I could see that cause I know Christopher Eccleston from a lot of stuff. I mean, he was just in Thor as Malekith and, he was in one of my like favorite horror films of all time, 28 Days Later. And he never plays a joking character. Like, I, I, I do think when like, he gets serious, it feels more natural for him. But I never comedic side, like the lighter side, it, it feels a little bit forced from him. And I, I didn't realize it was such a, a big break from the 80s till then. Because I was going to ask that, too. Because like, the one episode with the Daleks kind of talks into a little bit of like the the history of Doctor Who. And I wasn't sure, was that something that was depicted in, in the show, or was that just something that kind of always, always take place before the show ever started? They reference a lot back to the, the older Doctor Who type stuff. Uh, the, they'll bring up different episodes from before, different characters from before. They will show the different variations of the Doctor, His because um, Doctor, if you kill him, uh, doesn't die, he'll... he'll um, transform into another um physical being it'll be somewhat the same but his personality will be different it was it was kind of a a creative um decision back in the day to keep the series going but being able to um change out actors when need be so it was kind of a a creative choice back in the day that just kind of made this whole interesting turn on the show Okay, okay. I, I was just wondering, like, it was never to a point where I never understood what was going on, but kind of like a comic book where it relates to some sort of continuity, and you're like, well, I mean, I, I guess I don't know, need to know exactly what it re- relates to. I can kind of, yeah, exactly. I can fill in the, I can fill in the the blanks here. I mean, the use some uh, inferencing to figure out what you're saying. I was just curious, uh, per se. I mean, like, like I said, I did, I did enjoy it. I, I think some episodes are definitely better than others. The last one I, I watched, oh, definitely. The last one I watched with Simon Pegg was really good. I, I did like that. I basically he's like the the editor, and it's about this like alien that's kind of controlling Earth. And I, I I find myself I enjoy when they go in the future and the or the present more than the past, at least so far, because there was like an episode where they go into uh, where Ch- Charles Dixon's was alive, and I, I didn't think that one worked as well. I don't know. It's something about it didn't work as well as some of the upper, other episodes, but. Uh, I am really looking forward to hearing, seeing what David Tennant does with it because I, watching it too, I'm like, wow, this, I, when I think of Doctor Who and when I hear people talking about it, it's not like the personality of Christopher Eccleston is not what I imagine. He's like you said, Greg, he's a little bit more serious and a little bit more menacing than I expected. I'm like, wow, this guy is kind of, he's ready to kick ass really quickly. And he's ready, like the, the, especially the Daleks episode, like he is, and I know that's kind of the point of the episode where you see him kind of fall apart and, become the dogs in some way and become a little bit more uh vengeful well that's that's one of his greatest enemies so yeah yeah and i, I could see that i thought that was a really, really strong episode i'm looking forward to it like i said i'm acquiring that taste a little bit more but if i was going to give it overall grade still passing grade but, but because of some of the inconsistencies and because the first episode i thought was 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 pretty weak i would give it a, a strong b but like I said, grading on a curve, and I'm looking forward to seeing the other Doctors because I'm a, I'm, I'm a fan of David Tennant from other stuff I've seen him in. So I, I'm looking forward to see what he does with the character. Is he the next Doctor after Eccleston? Yes, he's the next one after Eccleston, and then you have uh, Matt Smith, okay. I, which is I, I'm rewatching because Netflix just uh, dropped some more episodes. So I'm I've rewatched from Chris, Chris Eccleston. I just got done with David Tennant, and now I'm towards the end of uh, the first season with uh, Matt Smith. Nice, nice. And I, I, I think that's when it became really when I heard about it first with with Matt Smith because of the Nerdist podcast. Uh, Might have been before that, but. Yeah, thank you for that. I appreciate it. I'm acquiring that taste, and I will, I will be listening and probably talking about it more on this podcast. And I hope I did the Hoovian fans proud. So, <laughs> all right. Well, enough of me talking, uh, Chuck. We gave you some assignments as well. I'm a little hesitant. I'm a little. I'm curious of what you thought of what you were given because even though I didn't give you Old Man Logan, I also really liked that and recommended it for you. So. 
If you didn't like it, I guess you can kind of blame both of us. So, anyways, well, I'll pass it over to you so you can, you know, come to the front of the classroom and give your report. Wait, what assignment? <laughs> <laughs> it, we put it on the board for over a week. You had plenty of opportunity. <laughs> Ugh, um, my dog ate it. I don't know. <laughs> you you no, don't um, have a dog. What? <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, man. <laughs> Let's see. I'll give the. Uh, I'll give everybody what they want. I guess I'll do the old, old man Logan one first, since both of you guys have some interest in it. But um, I'll start off by saying uh, there's there's a great creative team here working on this. You have Mark Millar and Steve McNiven, which is the uh, same team that worked on Civil War. McNiven's got some great art in this too. That's that's one of the things that I really like about this. I did have a little nitpick about some of the ways he draws like Logan's face in some of them, but that's the very minor nitpick thing. Like for the rest of the book, I, the art is like spectacular and it's written really well too. And I I gotta say I was I was very interested throughout this whole book. It was very uh, it was very cool, like very edge of your seat stuff. It certainly kept my interest, like mainly because I'm wondering like what happened to Logan that made him uh, refuse to pop his claws for over fifty years, and it's just uh, such a stark contrast of what we're used to seeing with Wolverine, and I think that's what really kind of propels the story along. And you're just wondering like what the hell happened to him? Like how could a guy that's just so quick to just you know flip out and kick everybody's ass like what would happen to him to make him not even raise his voice for 50 years? Like the guy just refuses to do anything that resembles a fight or an argument. And yeah, which when they finally revealed how that happened, um, like what made him refuse to fight like this, um, I'll give a little spoiler warning. Cause I'm going to get into it a little bit. So if you want to skip ahead a, a few minutes, if you haven't read this story or anything, but when basically that moment when they, they reveal that, uh, Mysterio tricked Wolverine into thinking all the other members of the X-Men were uh, villains and basically let Wolverine take them all out on his own. That was just crazy, crazy. I was not expecting that at all. And it's a really cool idea because as far as I know, I've never really seen anything like that done with with the X-Men and especially that kind of a cruel thing played on on Logan, you know. And it's it's something that you would wouldn't really think of, but when you see it, it makes a lot of sense. And it's like, wow, that's you know, that's kind of a stroke of genius. I would have liked to known though which member of the X Men he fought for ninety minutes, because he kind of said that he was fighting Bullseye, and he's like, oh, you know, we went back and forth for ninety minutes. Maybe I missed a clue in there or something. I wasn't sure who it was supposed to be, but I thought. They should have kind of said, like, well, which one of them was he fighting? Which one was the toughest for him to defeat? You know what I mean? That that would have been pretty cool. But with, with everything happening along the trip, I mean, he, he teams up with uh, Hawkeye, who is uh, very elderly now, and he's got long gray hair and a ponytail, and he's kind of going blind and everything, which Hawkeye can still kick some ass. That was pretty cool. <laughs> you know, he was, he was shooting the guy's... Uh, with his bow and arrow still based on the sounds they were making, you know, he could kind of locate where they were and he was still nailing them with the arrows, you know, chopping a few people up with the sword and stuff. You know, he's pretty badass, even though he was blind. So probably the toughest uh, blind guy behind Daredevil. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, like all the cool stuff on their trip, um, you could kind of guess pretty easily that sooner or later, something's going to piss off Logan enough to make him finally pop the claws again. So it kind of like keeps you reading and you're interested to see like, okay, what is the, the one thing that makes him do it again? Cause you know, it's coming, but I, I enjoyed uh, all the references to the Marvel characters and stuff like uh, Hank Pym was giant man. I think uh, the, the town was called Pym falls. Um, that was kind of comical too, that little scene, like, oh, why do they call it that and everything? Um, and then you see a version of Ultron in there, um, and Spider-Man's granddaughter and stuff like that. I was interested in some other stuff, uh, like this, this new Kingpin. And I think he, he mentioned really quick in passing that he was the one that killed Magneto. 
And I'm thinking, well, how the hell could he have killed Magneto? Like, this guy just seems like a regular guy, you know what I mean? And I honestly, I would like to see some additional stories in this universe to kind of flesh some of that stuff out. I think that would be really cool. And I would I would love some to see out. that, too. Yeah, like, I'm, like I want to see how Magneto fell, because you're talking about one of the greatest villains in Marvel, and, like, how, you know, how exactly would that go down? And just some of the other stuff, Red Skull becoming president, and, you know, how did that happen, and... Uh, Got elected, Captain of America. course, he's president. <laughs> well, yeah, true. <laughs> you know, maybe he has a, a insurance plan called uh, Skull Care or something <laughs> like that. Yeah, there's there's some backstory there that I would love to see. Some other stories, I would definitely check those out. The the spider buggy was cool. I will say, I I didn't realize the spider buggy could do everything that that Spider Man could too, like scaling the side of a building and stuff like that. Um, so that was that was interesting. The the end when I got to the end, it was really messed up for me. Like it's usually not the type of story I get into. Like with you know, they started to get into really some violent stuff when he finally lost his shit, basically, and started going nuts on the Hulk gang. I was I was real worried when he got to the baby Hulk, and you know when you you finally see that he just took him out and. He was just taking him with him. Then he was willing to raise him and stuff. Uh, that made the ending so much better for me because I was like, okay, I, I should have known Wolverine's not a total douche. <laughs> you know, he wouldn't have <laughs> just killed the helpless baby. I thought that was a really respectable thing that he was going to raise this, raise the baby right, like himself and uh, kind of form his own little team and everything. So that was really cool. I was very happy with how, end how it ended. Yeah, I, I got to say, I, I did enjoy it. Yay! I think, yeah. I think I'd give it a good, like, solid B, B plus, right in that range. It was pretty, pretty cool. The, I, I was wondering too, cause this is an alternate reality story. And so I got thinking, like, well, does it have an actual number designation? You know, like the mainstream Marvel U is Earth 616. So I looked, I looked this up online and it's actually Earth 807128. And I'll sh I'm sure everyone's going to remember that because we'll be tested on it. So. <laughs> but yeah, that's, is that a reference to something, or is different. it just a random number? I guess it's just a random number. I really don't know how they do these things with with these uh, the the reality numbers and stuff like that. But I did find interesting that I guess it said something about in that in that reality down the line in the future, people were trying to use Galactus to power a time machine or something like that. And they, they tried to get to the earth 616 to try to inhabit that. And that's when the 616 fantastic four kind of, uh, let them go to this other earth called new world or something like that. N U world. So I thought that was interesting that they, they kind of had some other stuff going on in this universe, but um, I would love to see more of it. I would love to see uh, some of the other backstories or even some of the stuff that happens after the ending of this. Um, I think that would be really cool. So, yeah, I, uh, thanks a lot for the recommendation. I, I definitely, uh, definitely enjoyed it. I'm I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I was very – I've been waiting with bated breath for, for uh, this night to come <laughs> so I could hear what you said you, I was hoping that you would like it because I've been <laughs> recommending it for like for the longest time. I even really need to go back and reread all of that because it was just so awesome for me. So yeah, that was uh, that was a very enjoyable first part of my assignment, and my second part was uh, for Dan, and that was uh, a TV show by the name of Human Target, and this was out in. Uh, uh, I believe 2010 and 2011 only ran for two seasons. I, I was able to watch three episodes of this. Uh, it was the first three. So I got a pretty good idea of the, the setup and the beginning and everything. Um, I didn't just pick up in the middle or something, but I actually got a really good feel for it after the first episode, but I watched a couple more just to get a little bit more of a solid point of view. Um, and I got to say, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I yeah, I would definitely say this show is up my alley. Um, it's uh, it's in the vein of like a Taken, uh, Twenty Four Born trilogy that type of thing. 
Um, I, I would see, I would say even maybe a little James Bondish with some of the gadgets and stuff like that. I'm not a big James Bond fan, but I just I get that kind of feel from it a little bit. But I I was disappointed to learn that it only ran for two seasons because uh, I'll be honest, I didn't know much about this show going in, and I was thinking possibly maybe it was still on or something like that. But uh, I was kind of upset to to learn that they had canceled it after the second season, and it wasn't even really like two full seasons like a regular show. There, there ended up being. A total of twenty five episodes because they were they were more like a half season, like you were talking about before, Dan. They're like the twelve or thirteen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe that works for that kind of thing, but uh, it's unfortunate that it got canceled when it did. It's something I would have liked to get into on like a weekly basis, like something that I could uh, look forward to from week to week if it was still running. But uh, I I do like uh, the main actor. I think he's really good. Um, I think he's pretty cool. Like he, he plays the scenes very cool, and um, he. I haven't really seen him in anything else. Um, I'm sure he's been in some other stuff, but I was unfamiliar with him. But I really like the way he did this character, and it's, he seems to fit really well. And uh, I like the supporting characters a lot too. I like the character of uh, Guerrero. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, and and it seems like every show you guys know, like every show anymore they gotta have one of these computer whiz guys you know <laughs> there's there's always that character like you gotta have like even on arrow he, he's got a, a girl that's a computer whiz and uh, on smallville he had uh, chloe and stuff like that but um i like how i like how they did this guy i think he has like a confidence and a like an arrogance about him and i think it makes him much more interesting and uh, actually makes him pretty funny a, a lot of times you know yeah I like how he calls everybody dude. Yeah. <laughs> he, uh, it's, it's he's funny. played by uh, Jackie Earl Haley, and those are probably, you know, who have seen Watchmen. That's the guy who plays Warshack, and he uh, he's a small dude, but he is somehow still menacing, but he, he's kind of a he's kind of a badass in that show, so. Yeah, I agree. I um, And I did read that about uh, him playing that part in the Watchmen, but he, he does have a... Uh, little intimidation factor to him even though he's like a just this little kind of nerdy computer guy you would you would think but like and i'm thinking to it when he was sitting at the table and they sent the two guys in to try to you know kind of push him around a little bit and threaten him and turns out he had looked up information on them beforehand and he knew everything about their lives and you know he was mentioning their family members and kind of scared the shit out of them (laughs) i thought that was pretty funny yeah, yeah. And I, I like the other guy, Winston, too. I think he's funny because he, uh, a lot of times he, he'll disagree with the other two with, like, the methods of how they're doing stuff. And um, he's a little more apprehensive on kind of going balls to the walls like these guys like to do. And I I think that contrast is really funny. It re- works really well. Yeah, I, he. Uh, it's funny because I see that guy, Chai McBride. He was, he was, like, the principal in Boston Public, uh, that TV show on Fox way back when, and I always recognize him as uh, that role. But I, I did really like him, and yeah. all the di- like, like the dynamic between the three of the characters. Yeah, but yeah, it's it's a really fun show. I love I love the action. Obviously, I I think they I think they won an Emmy actually for stunt coordination. The the show won a couple or not one. I think they were nominated for a few Emmys, primetime Emmys. Uh, I think it was stunt coordination, theme music, and main title design or something like that but but yeah the, they do a great job with the action the one scene where he was in the uh it was the train episode and they were fighting in the the vent like the ceiling duct in this really confined space and uh that's something i never really seen before i'm like wow that's really cool and you know they, they did that part really well and um i actually I dig the format of this, uh, that it's kind of a different case each week and you don't really need to know the episode before to kind of enjoy it. Those, those kind of shows are great in their, in their own right that, you know, have a connecting storyline and stuff like that. I do enjoy those too, but, um, I kind of find some like this refreshing to watch once in a while because you can just kind of kick back and pick up any old episode you want and just have a great time watching it because it's, uh, it really they kind of stand on their own from week to week, so I, I thought that was a really cool aspect. Of and one it. thing I just realized too uh, was there's actually a connection between the show you gave me, Chuck, and the show I gave you, 
and that's uh, Lenny James, who uh, we were talking about not too long ago as like the best character in Jericho. He also has a recurring role in Human Target. Probably haven't gotten to him yet, but he plays his like character Baptiste, okay, yeah. who's like kind of like the only equal to that of Christopher Chase, and he's some. And usually his scenes or or his show, uh, episodes are some of the best of the season. So he he does make a great character and a great counter like uh, counteract to that of Christopher Chase. Nice. I, yeah, I, I definitely intend to keep watching um, the rest of the episodes, so I'm, I'm sure I'll I'll get to those. But one thing I wanted to mention real quick, too, is like I, I said before, I didn't know much about this show going in. So I was kind of surprised to learn that uh, the show is actually based on a DC Comics character. It was a character of the same name, Christopher Chance, the human target. And uh, here's a little trivia tidbit for you. The the character debuted in 1972 in action comics number 419 but uh i thought it was cool i'm like i never realized this wasn't even on my radar of uh like a comic book show you you would never think that i mean obviously it doesn't have like a superhero feel to it or something like that but it's more of that uh you know kind of thriller action uh type of comic and and some stuff that they were doing back in at that time but there was another TV show done in 1992 by the same title. Guessing it's probably not as good as this, but haven't seen that at all. But yeah, so just thought that was a pretty cool tidbit there. I'm always interested in stuff that uh, makes the jump from comics to uh, TV or comics to movies or anything like that. So as far as a grade, I would say, I would say yeah, something like a B plus. I really enjoyed it a lot, and I'm looking forward to getting into some more um, episodes and trying to finish out those those two seasons. Even though I'll probably be uh, ticked off when I get to the end <laughs> that they didn't continue it. I do know? think it it ends at a good spot, at least I, I would say. I don't know if it's last episode, it's best episode, but it new characters are kind of added for the second season. They're a little bit forced in per se, but there is a really good episode. That, I mean, they eventually do end up making the show better and then i think near, near, like the second best episode the second to last episode i think is my favorite of the entire series if i'm remembering correctly and i remember thinking when the show was on that christopher the guy who plays christopher uh, chance would make uh, like a great captain america he's a yeah. little older than like chris evans so i see why they didn't but I, he just has that look that like chiseled look you would you would think for yeah. captain america maybe even like a nick fury per se like a you know the white nick fury but <laughs> but yeah, I'm glad you liked it. Very, and I actually did pick up like the graphic novel for Human Target. I haven't read it yet, but uh, I heard it's not really like the comic all that much. But I, 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 fig- I figured I'd check it out. So, yeah, awesome. Cool. All right, Greg. Well, it's all come down to you. Probably the one we're looking forward to the most. Uh, Are we sure we're looking forward to it? I don't know. We're, it's, we're, we'll find out. I'm hoping you didn't hate my movie, <laughs> uh, or at least you know liked it a little bit. But I, I looked at the bright side. I'm like, if you hate it, at least I can say, well, you know, the guy didn't make Guardians of the Galaxy, so maybe you know, just get an idea what his where his head's at for that movie. I don't know. But uh, uh yeah. Uh, so it, it was quite interesting because I did see uh, James Gunn, and I'm like, oh, it's the director for Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm gonna have to keep careful watch and see what's uh, see how this is how this is gonna be. Deals with. Rain Wilson's character, um, Frank, and he loses his wife, who is played by Liv Tyler. And when I, like, was starting to watch this, I'm like, how the hell do they think they can pair up Liv Tyler and Rain Wilson and convince us that they're married? How the hell does that work? Which they do end up doing in the in, in the middle of the story. They they do kind of uh, um, show you that it, it gets. There's a lot of weird parts to it, and like like you said in the the last podcast, th- this is kind of uh, like a kick ass movie in the fact that uh, that it is um, a superhero in the real world. Somebody trying to become a, a superhero. So there were a lot of the same parallels between um, Kick-Ass and, and this movie. This movie tends to go a little bit really goofy in a lot of parts, and then extremely the other way of extremely uh, violence. Yes. 
Yeah, very violent. I, I, I especially like part where the dude cuts in line and he comes back in his suit, which him changing in the car was hilarious with the little girl seeing uh, Rain Wilson in the car with his ass up towards the window. You got to see way more of Rain <laughs> Wilson than you really wanted to see. But him coming back and cracking the guy in the head, I'm not sure... I, I, I'm not sure if that was a practical effect that they did or if it was some kind of CGI going on, but it looked awesome. All that looked really cool for the most part. I thought the the main actors in the movie um, did, did a pretty good job. I was especially surprised at um, Kevin Bacon. He just played a douche perfectly and they had a look going on him that just screamed this is a giant douchebag <laughs> um, it was a shirt actually that said this is a giant douchebag it was kind of weird yeah and it was great i had a little problem with rain wilson uh just the fact that i i've loved him as uh dwight Schrute, and so i always going through i'm like well that's kind of like a shrewdism and this is kind of like shrewd uh, yep they're Kind of both insane a little bit, um, but this character goes, this Frank guy goes a little too far as uh, the Crimson Bolts. And then the sec- some of the secondary characters, I didn't care for their um, acting too much. The The best out of the secondary characters, though, is, um, I, I don't remember his name, but he, he's in uh, The Walking Dead. Um, and he, he's got a really big, uh, following behind him. He's, he's very well loved. And I think he's, he's going to be in Guardians of the Galaxy too. Oh, Mickey Ward. Uh, but the, the, the story was good and interesting, but they went off onto a lot of weird tangents. Like you could tell this guy was some kind of psychopath. He's like, what, 40 something? He's drawing like little kid pictures to inspire himself. Like, there's a lot of things in there that tell that this guy isn't all there. He's a little bit crazy. And I guess that's reflected in some of the um, animations that pop up. Like, when he's looking out the door and there's a cop at the door, but you see, like, there's a little cartoon brain where you can see, like, a little video of what he thinks is going to happen. So there's a lot of those moments that kind of take you out of the movie. So that it was kind of corny. But then there's other corny moments in there that play really awesome. Like when he's watching uh, the TV and there's this... I'm hoping I'm not going to offend Chuck with anything that I'm going to say here. There's this corny religious uh, superhero show uh, where James Gunn actually plays the devil. Um, and a lot of the stuff, I, I thought they played that great, but then there's other moments in his real life situations that are played corny that, that don't work, like towards the end, where I felt like it was, it was becoming more serious, and especially with the music playing, I, they added in the animanopias of like the bam, the pow, uh, the stuff like that, where I felt like it really shouldn't have been included because I felt like it was a, a serious moment and like he's getting over a little bit of that stuff in the past. It, it just doesn't have the right feel. And I feel like we should have got over that at that point. By the way, Chuck, I seriously do not recommend you watch this movie <laughs> at all. I think you will be seriously <laughs> offended by watching this movie. That's okay. I'm kind of lost so far. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm kind of jumping all over the place with it. I'm sorry. To be fair, um, the movie kind of jumps all over the listen. place, but hey. yeah, it does a little bit. It's it's got a lot of interesting moments, and there's a lot of fun moments. Ellen Page is kind of freaking crazy in it, and <laughs> as opposed to any other time, <laughs> it's weird. I'm not sure. Like, at some moments, I find her just kind of like amorphous human being kind of situation like whatever but then sometimes in the, when she was wearing the costume and trying to be sexy for some reason it kind of worked for me <laughs> so I don't know it was weird I could see that happen. but then that yeah and then there was a whole rape scene where she's raping essentially, yeah, essentially raping there was two rapes in this movie that is a lot of raping like she she raped uh, Dwight's character, spoilers, and then 
uh, Sarah, Liv Tyler's character, gets essentially raped by a, a black dude drug dealer. But it it was a sick and twisted movie. It was even more sick and twisted, I thought, than um, the Kick-Ass, oh, yeah. if, if I'm going to make a comparison between the two movies. Frankly, I thought Kick-Ass was a lot better, but I was still happy that I watched this movie. So I, I thought that was really good. I, I, and he plays a really dumb freaking guy trying to become a, a superhero. Um, the way he goes about doing some of the stuff is just completely wrong. And you definitely see him, like, really go off the deep end, going really, like, a giant psychopath with, with some of his tactics that he's using. Like, dude cuts in line. He's essentially sent him to the hospital. I'm pretty sure that guy's dead with how the hell his freaking skull was split open. But yeah, I, th- I thought it was good. Um, I guess I'll, I'll, I'll grade it now. I, th- I think I just about covered anything. Do you, can you think of anything, Dan, that you wanted to hear me talk about? Or uh, No, I actually, it was funny because we were talking about it. And uh, it's been a long time since I've seen this. I saw it when it first came out. Actually, I think I own it on Blu-ray, but I have not seen it then. And not seen it in a while. But I, it was one of the first movies I ever reviewed for back when I had my own like uh, movie review thing. But uh, I do remember just thinking that when I was watching it that, this is like really sadistic, uh, in 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 some good ways. Like I I kind of like it when movies kind of go a little bit crazy. But I was curious what you were gonna think of it because I know like you like knowing your sensibilities. I'm like I I could see Greg appreciating some of this, but now you saying some of the scenes, I'm like oh yeah, I do remember that and how that was kind of a little weird. But uh, and oh there was also a cameo from Nathan Fillion. He played like Bible Man or something. Yes, so he. Yeah, he he was he was the Bible. He was the uh, Holy Avenger. But yeah, I I, th- I thought it was good. There there were some good moments. Um, I thought the story was a lot better than the um, than the uh, direction, I guess, of of it. I, I don't know if that's the right terminology uh, or not. The, the story was good, but some of the things like the animation and stuff, I thought, kind of brought it down um like i like he missed some of the uh tonal moments that with some of the stuff that he's done now i'm just rambling i'm sorry um but for for grade cuz i I'd, I'd put um kick ass like it, it a minus uh, a b plus i guess i'd i'd have to give this like a, a b minus b it it was good i i wouldn't be like clamoring to see it again uh but i'm definitely glad i i, I saw it and glad that you recommended it for me um and it didn't give me like the greatest hope for guardians of the galaxy but it didn't really quash it either um because I, I i like the direction he went with some of it and some of the humor was good but he's got a better cast i think for guardians coming up and everything so Plus, I don't think he'll be able uh, to, to go nearly as sadistic as he did with that. I think he's gonna. Oh no, 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 no! Definitely not. Definitely not. I, I think he's gonna be able to um, tone this one down, and and but it's it's still gonna be goofy, Chuck. Sorry. And for my second one, the uh, much anticipated uh, review is of, and it's gonna probably be controversial. Chuck had me read. Superman, Red Sun, which is interesting since I recommended Old Man Logan to Chuck. And Chuck, who wrote that? Mr. Mark Millar. Yep, and that's who wrote uh, Superman the Red Sun. So it was kind of interesting that we both had recommendations for each other. Uh, I love Old Man Logan, and it's the same writer, except now doing Superman, as we all know. One of my favorite superheroes of all time. So uh, I actually <laughs> wrote this one down. So if I sound a little um, stagnant, I- I'm I'm sorry. Firstly, I would like to talk about the art in this book. I have always found Dave Johnson to be a very capable artist, which sounds awful, but it, I always love his stuff. His cover work for me has always been very creative and interesting, and his interior pre- pencils are great. That's pretty much all I said about that because Dave Johnson's really good and it's 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 up there with some of the best uh, comic artists out there. But the story by Mark 
Millar is exceptionally well done, particularly the ending, which is apparently repeat myself in this good writing, Greg, uh, the, the ending, which was very well done. It leaves the question, is this time slash storyline circular? As for the supporting characters, they are pretty great. Olsen as an agent is fun and exciting. Batman is a badass as always. Lois is a pain in the ass as usual. And she's always a little like annoying, like I'm awesome. That Girl power. Awesome. Yeah. It, it's a little bit too much. It needs to be toned down a little bit. I always found her to be annoying. And Wonder Woman has a great new dynamic. Lex Luthor, though, is the best character in the entire book. A dynamic genius. On the negative side, he is kind of homicidal. <laughs> slightly um, negative. It's like, you know. Slightly <laughs> negative. That makes the character more interesting to me, though. The fact that he is doing it for us Americans, albeit fictional, makes it justifiable in, in my book. I, I live in America, so I got to I gotta side with America, even though it's a little bit of a homicidal dude. He's trying to do it for us. America. Yeah. Still, with all of this, the one part I disliked was Superman. Superman is a character, as we all know, is a character I don't like. I'm repeating a lot of stuff that I'm saying. I'm just ad-libbing some parts in here, by the way. Uh, the story just adds in more elements to the character that I don't like. Characteristics that all add up to no freedoms for our own good. It just makes my skin crawl. Like the, the big brother watching us. I do not like that shit. It's creepy to me. It did prove me wrong with one thing, though. It was an enjoyable Superman story that I liked. But to be honest, for me, it wasn't actually a Superman story. It was a Lex Luthor story. So I still may not like Superman, but maybe I can add an odd Superman title into my diet every once in a while. The odd, exceptional Superman story. I'd give it about like a, a B, B minus. Uh, same as kind of a, a super, uh, like I said, a Superman, it, it's, it's still your same old Superman character, except added on to that, that he's watching people and he's being very controlling of people's lives. So he's kind of cutting down on people's, um, freedom. So it was Superman with a lot more crap that I didn't like, but I, I just thought Lex Luthor was so exceptional um, and his way of taking down Superman was just so awesome. And that circular ending, which spoiler alert, it either sounds like Lex Luthor down the generations birthed Superman and then went back in time somehow or something, or this is going to start uh, it actually starts up the the DC universe as we know it. That that was just mind blowing awesomeness right there. That that definitely uh, Lex Luthor and that ending just really made me enjoy this story. Mark Miller is definitely uh, an exceptional writer. Um, so much props. Uh, thanks for thanks for the read, Chuck. Yeah, no problem. And I, I was going to mention too, though, that the additional stuff you didn't like, like the kind of the watchful eye and the uh, a little bit of a oppressive type of behavior, that's that's more to reflect the the communist type of uh, you know allegory that's going on in, in the background. That's like oh yeah, kind of the, it, It's more of that than than his character because it's like you know what if he was raised in communist Russia and. You know, that's kind of what he would become is this, this overbearing, like, control freak that has to make sure everything's functioning perfectly. And it's kind of like the other side of that coin, whereas, like, the, the, the real version of him, it's like he's protective, but he, he also lets people kind of do things on their own. So it's, it's kind of the other side of that coin, but I thought it was a, a cool dynamic and I thought something you, you might enjoy checking out. Yeah, I, I definitely did enjoy the story. It's just that for some reason I just can't get over that uh, dislike for, for Superman. I, I was trying to go in 
and try and go in scot free of all that, but it was it. You, I still got the same uh, feel that I usually do from Superman, but then it was added had the added on of communist Russia kind of thought process in there. And I'm American, but uh, I'm I'm not a fan of communist uh, Russia. That was kind of. To be fair, this may not have been the best story to uh, build Superman up because this kind of shows like a. A more negative side of him, like a, you know, a negative uh, else world kind of tale. So it's not really. Yeah, well, you were to, you, uh, you, you were. I was just going to... for more something that you might enjoy. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, exactly. Because uh, I go a little bit more towards edgier characters, and uh, yeah. So this is like a, a an edgier, darker version. Yeah, yeah. For a character, I don't necessarily have to like the traits that they have as long as they're interesting to me. I think I read Red Sun. It's been a while, but uh, I remember I remember enjoying it. But um, <laughs> if you want to read like a really edgier version of Superman, there's a. It's not really Superman per se, but it's the irredeemable uh, line. Um, I think it's done by Miller too, where basically it's like, what if Superman went super crazy and kind of just went to like the dark side? And and there's another um story along with that that goes in correlation with it where it's like Lex, Lex Luthor becomes like the savior because he's trying to protect us from the Superman character. Yeah, I, I read the first graphic novel of that and I thought that was a pretty good cool dynamic because what happens when this godlike creature kind of turns on us and then it leads to a lot of a lot of great stories so um, but it's not like I'll, I'll have to check that it's out. not like real not I shouldn't say real, but you can see the influences there for sure, like the DC influences and Marvel influences. And there's a character that's kind of like Batman, but not Batman. So, but uh, you know, I'm Batman. Exactly. Oh yeah, Greg. What did you think of the um, Batman in the little furry Russian hat? Ew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, did you? I thought it was kind of. Did you give it a Greg? A did you bit. give it a grade, Greg? Yeah, I, I gave it a I, I I gave the same kind of grade for both things. It was a, a B B minus. Alrighty, all right. Uh, any I was I'm a harsh grader, yeah. very harsh grader. I'm that dickhead teacher that nobody <laughs> liked. That was very harsh with grading. You're the Mister Feeny out of all of us. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I, I don't even have a nice morality tale at the end here to, to wrap everything up with. I'm sorry. Yeah. And I can't do it in an awesome Knight Rider kit voice. <laughs> Took me a second, <laughs> not going to lie. <laughs> Anything else before we take a break? All right. Nope. So we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we usually end each episode with a letter. And we're going to kind of do that, but a little bit differently. And we'll get into that in just a bit. On the Simplistic Reviews podcast, we talk movies. We talk TV. We talk. Hello, Julie, what the heck are you doing? Trying to make our spot sound more exciting by adding explosions. Yeah, I'm pretty sure you could have got the point across with sound effects, not the real thing. Car, car. Download the show on iTunes or at simplisticreviews.blogspot.com. I'm sure your insurance company will cover that. No, they won't. No, they probably won't. All right, and welcome back. Last week, we kind of teased it a little bit. Greg mentioned that. For this episode, we're going to start a different thing for our episode letter that we'll do on occasion. And what Greg did is he kind of come up with this little skit type of, I guess skit might be the wrong word, I would say, maybe a short story per se. But anyways, Greg, why don't you kind of explain you know, what we'll be doing here in just a few seconds? Well, I, I tried to write my own little uh, story for the end here uh, at the end of the podcast because uh, I was kind of like, you know... Editorial school and everything, I, I came up with that, um, but I kind of wanted to do something maybe a little bit more uh, fun every once in a while instead of something a little bit, uh, it was kind of institutional, a little, little like being back in school, it kind of goes along with this episode of, of writing something where you kind of had to research maybe a little bit uh, of a story or something that goes on, you have to research that. I, I was wanted to do something fun. I've been wanting to try and write stories for a while. I know it's probably not going to be up to the level of like uh, some great writers, but I figured I could try my hand at, at writing something, and I thought it'd be fun to do it as like a, a little play, like a little teleplay 
Um, I know Chuck likes to do voices. I'm not exceptionally well known for my voice work, but I, I, I figured I could give it a, a shot. So I figured it'd be kind of cool to do this. And, um, if it's not well received, well, we could just end it here. But, uh, I have a, a couple episodes written. So if it's, uh, liked, maybe we could do more. I, I, I don't know. So, uh, it's, it's called a Unknown. And the first episode is called Blood. All right. So here we are, episode one of Unknown Blood. Blood, blood everywhere, on the cheap hotel wallpaper. On the hands of the man in the graphite black costume. A black costume consisting of some of the strongest armor. A costume that conceals the man's identity. On a long steel blade of the sword belonging to the man in the armor. A blade that holds a dead man's body up against the cheap wallpaper. The armored man stands as still as a dead man hanging from the wall. His hand still holding on to the hilt of his sword and his head held low. Who am I? The den man on the wall begins to glow blue, but goes unnoticed by the man in black. He stays consumed with the question in his head. Who who am I? What did I do? Who are you? The den man appears to talk. You are a murderer, so it seems. Very good at it, so appears. And as for me, my name is Don. Dawn of the Dead, as a matter of fact. The living looks up into the dead man's pale, rigor mortis face, cast in a glow of blue. You, you're the one I killed. How can you talk? Oh, you're talking to him? Why would you do that? He's not going to talk back. He's dead. You're vapor. You're a ghost. Well, yes, of course I am. What else can possess the dead? You're his ghost? No, no. If I was him, I would be ultra pissed at you, even to try and kill you back. I am my own man, my own ghost. (laughs) Do you know how this happened? Why I killed him? So we are done with me now? That was (laughs) short-lived. Well, you're out of luck. I have no answers. I just showed up when you started your crying and questioning. I sensed a death, and I decided to see what happened with the soul. The soul? Yes, the soul. Like me, I'm a lost soul. Or so the living would say, me? I'm not lost. I just don't feel like moving on yet. This man, the the one that I killed, did his soul move on? Well... There was nothing here when I arrived. Just a husk. It feels much colder in here than your typical minutes-old corpse. Usually the soul sticks around for a while, figures out what it's doing. Very odd. Maybe you sent him to Hades. That is always a possibility. No. I couldn't have sent him to hell. What kind of horror am I? What's wrong with hell? It's very lovely this time of year. (laughs) What's wrong with you? That's horrible. I'm so sorry. You please must excuse me. I'm afraid the death means something quite different for those of us that have uh, passed beyond the pale. Plus, I'm afraid that I spend a lot of time by myself, and you can only imagine how that affects one's soul. That's all right. I'm a little affected myself. I'm just not sure what to do. Hmm. I think you're asking the wrong spirit. I usually disappear to solve all of my problems. Well, I think most spirits would give you that advice. No, that's just ignoring the problem. I can't do that. Maybe 
Maybe I should just turn myself over to the police. You know, admit my crime. Well, if that is what you choose to do, then I think you'll have no problem following through. Sirens have been howling for almost as long as we have been talking, and it sounds like they're outside right now. Fine. I'll get this over with. This is to the police! Open up! If you don't mind, I think I will stick around and uh, watch the show. <laughs> Fine by me, if you don't mind getting noticed. Doesn't bother me in the least. Oh, you might need this, by the way. The sword sticking out of the dead man's chest comes flying out with incredible speed. The unknown man plucks it out of the air without even looking. A stunned expression etches across his face. This is the police! Open up! Open this door right now, or we're breaking it down! The unknown man walks slowly over to the door of the hotel room and turns the lock halfway. Policemen huddle around the other side, weapons drawn, ready for anything. I surrender. The lock is turned all the way open. A policeman turns the knob and pushes his full weight into the door, trying to catch his assailant off guard and possibly knock him back to the ground. It works to no avail. The black costume man easily jumps back out of the way, letting the overzealous policeman tumble to the floor. The doorway is wide open for the drawn weapons of the city's finest. One among them is easily startled by the quick movements and opens fire, as does his compatriots as soon as they hear the shot. The unknown man is left open for slaughter, with only a bloody sword to defend him. Well, we hope you enjoyed the first episode of Unknown, and I apologize for my crappy voices, but uh, Chuck and Greg certainly held up their end of the bargain. Uh, but it, you guys, anything left before we bring the show to a close? Uh, I, I hope that they like that episode, and uh, please leave comments if you, if you do. Um, I'd like to hear back, so uh, and determine uh, we can determine whether we'll uh, move on with the story or... Uh, light my computer on fire and destroy the additional episodes that I have, uh, have written. You know, you could like, there's, you don't have to go right to the turning a computer on file. There's a lot of different steps you can take. <laughs> there's a delete button they have now. Really cool. Oh, good. They invented one yeah, of those. Yeah, they, they did. They did. I, for one would like to say, I'm glad I'm done with my homework and I'm ready to get the hell out of school. <laughs> School's out for Summer. That's what you think. Well, <laughs> I'm sure we'll have more homework out down there. Maybe we'll do an episode where, like, we'll have a listener assign us something, maybe down the line. But, uh, but yeah, I think that'll bring us to the end of this episode for this week. And like Greg mentioned, there's uh, a lot of ways to get in contact with us if you want to let us know what you thought of the episode, especially uh, about unknown. You can uh, get us on Twitter. We're at Talking in Circles on Facebook. Also, search Talking in Circles. You can go to the episode post. Uh, just go to geekcastradio.com. Also, email us at feedback or email us. Um, our email address is feedback at geekcastradio.com. But, but that'll be it for us for this week. Remember to join us next week. Same time, same network, same podcast feed. But for now, this has been Chuck. This has been Greg or Dawn of the Dead. Oh, that was you? Weird. And this has been Dan, <laughs> and we've been talking in circles. We'll see you next week. <laughs> 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 Holy voices, that seems like a nice, like a nice, like, seriously. That was bad. I parked the floor. It's late on a Friday, this is past my bedtime. Actually, it's Sunday morning or Saturday morning.